Greetings, I am Rob Chapman and welcome to Chappers TV. Today's episode is sponsored by XVIV and I'm going to show you something that I have never tried before and it's something that practically every professional guitar player that goes on stage and tours and uses big stages um, uses and it's wireless guitar transmitters and receivers. If you ask any of my bandmates, I have this massive pet peeve, and that is that <laughs> I can't really coil guitar cables very well. Dave, it sets his teeth on edge. He shows me time and time again, you turn the cable and twist it at the same time, and, and then it ends up in a perfectly round coil, and I just go, nah, around my elbow, around my hand, throw it in the gig bag. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, every producer I've ever worked with is like, what are you doing? So what happens is I get to a gig, I open my, uh, you know, the, the box with all my pedals, all my bits and bobs, my bag of gear, and all the cables are tangled up. I have to unwind them when I've undone them. And um, I hate guitar cables. They're a pain in the ass. They, especially if you're playing a series of short gigs and you're maybe you know, second on the bill, third on the bill or whatever, and you got the classic British 10 minutes to get on a set up and then a line check. The last thing you want is loads of guitar cables, uh, especially in classic uh, British venues, again, where they're all painted black and they're sticky and the cables get sticky and then your hands are sticky. Uh, there are so many things that I don't like about guitar cables. They are, however, I've always considered a necessary evil because why would you use uh, a wireless guitar system? I mean, it's bound to go wrong, it's bound to get interference, it's bound to be really expensive. Now, like I say, this video is sponsored by Xvive. The way I do this is I'm shooting the video now. I'm gonna try them for the first time on video. And if I don't like them, what'll happen is I'll just phone them up and say, sorry, I'm not gonna do the video. You probably won't see the video because I don't want to damage the reputation of the company. If I do like them, you'll immediately know because I'm a very see-through and honest person and then you'll be watching this video. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I'm just gonna be straight up. I hope we know by now that that's the kind of guy I am. So, XV transmitter and receiver. What are they like? Well, they're very small. They are about the size of a car key. So, you know, that kind of size. Um, they have, I'll, get, I'll do a magic close up right now. So you can see they've got a channel button because there are four channels you can operate these on. There's an on off switch, two little lights. Uh, one of them is the battery indication. One of them is which channel that you're on. Uh, there's a power charging port on the side and that's it. They're really, really simple and um, I'm actually a little bit, not anxious. I really want these to be amazing. I really want wireless in general to be great. A really quick perusal of the XVIV wireless system. Uh, by the way, this is the XU2 that I'm using here. Um, manual, which is tiny, simply says that you can get 70 feet out of them, obviously without being obstructed. Um, and that the latency is just six milliseconds. I mean, it's six milliseconds. Well, I mean, you're all gonna say, you know, that's stupid, Rob. Why are you even mentioning that? Um, they operate uh, within a certain temperature range. So they're not recommended for use below 10 degrees centigrade or above 50 degrees. These are really cheap, by the way, before I kind of um, get into this review much more. They kind of feel affordable and also don't. That's a really silly statement, but what I mean is you get the packaging's really nice and um, you get that kind of apple type feel when you open the box. Smells kind of like rubber, <laughs> kind of like that. You know, you get Thomas Blug uh, promoting them. Um, and it, here's one in a, in a packet, for example, with a charging cable that comes with it. Um, the unit is made of plastic and it feels like 
a small plastic car key. Now apparently what you do is you turn them on and they need to flash blue to know that they're on the same channel and then they're connected. So I think, it, honestly, I've literally flown back from Germany today. I am jet lagged by whatever difference there is between Germany and England. It's like 45 minutes or something. Uh, I slept for four hours. But the only reason I'm filming this video now is because I'm genuinely excited to bin off uh, the majority of my guitar leads. I mean, there are many ways you can use these. Uh, you could have one of the guitar and one of the amp. <laughs> but I use a pedal board, and what it recommends is one of the guitar and one of the pedal board. Um, so I'm going to try that. <clears throat> I think I'm going to use that because I know I set it up recently and it's in good working order. Uh, this is the rig du jour with the classic stuff on the floor. Um, which I'm just loving. Here are a bunch of other axes I've got that I'm currently tweaking, working on in preparation for a recording I'm doing. Recording a solo EP, called In The Sunshine. So <clears throat> I might use some of these as well, but at the moment I figure why not use the V? It's there, I haven't played a V for a while. So <clears throat> just whack that on, get it warming up and um, not too loud. This is all wired in, but you can see there's no um, there's no cable going into the input of my TU3, and there's no cable in the V. So let's do this, and we're on. That blue light indicates that we're connected. This one is the transmitter, which means I'm going to whack this in my guitar. This one is the receiver that goes in my pedal board. Okay, it's just in there. When it feels kind of sturdy, like it's not going to move around or whatever. I think with a V, probably it might be an issue if I'm sat down, but there are no buttons on the bass side, so it probably will be okay. That's in there. Simple as that. That's my guitar lead. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> It's really good, so you know what, I'm going to roll audio and capture this properly with a microphone and you'll be watching this review. <laughs> uh, that's the process I'd go through with all the stuff I review at home and actually a lot of the time, well pretty much all the time with the stuff I review for Anderton's or anyone else, um, I start the shoot, if I don't like it we go, nah, I'm not going to do it. Um, it works, of course it works, why wouldn't it work? It's a stupid thing to say. It's just for me, it's kind of strange that I'm not connected to anything and I'm making sounds. Anyway, let me roll the mics. All that's happened now is to send it into me just jamming because I'm just really enjoying the fact that I'm disconnected from my amp but connected to my amp. Uh, let's connect with a guitar cable and see if we can hear a discernible difference.
So without the guitar cable. So the only difference is that with the cable I'm tethered to an amplifier by a cable and with the XVEVE uh, I am completely free to roam around and do what I want. I mean I could literally leave the receiver attached to the TU3 on my pedal board and switch it off, get to the gig and switch it on. <laughs> It's probably time to just go get a coffee. Watch the magic as the camera begins to move all by its own. <laughs> that was really weird. I literally, in the, my head, psychologically went, oh, you've probably reached about the length of your cable by now. How weird is that? So at this point I'd just like to cut to the camera audio. And what you're hearing is, is me in the room here. And now upstairs. My favourite mug, by the way. <laughs> this coffee is purely sci-fi because I made it an hour ago and actually it's really cold. It's, uh, quite frankly, it's a really strange experience walking around and playing a guitar and being tethered and being not tethered. I think I can hear slightly more latency, but I don't know because I'm also hearing it from very far away. And obviously this isn't designed at all to be used through bricks and mortar and floorboards and, you know, it's a red brick British house. Nicest looking microwaves you will ever see in your entire life. Thank you to Sylvia. <laughs> That's it. This is a photograph that one of my followers sent me of himself with one of his guitars, and I thought it was really sweet. 
So I stuck it to the fridge with the Spider-Man magnet. <laughs> Uh, this is the milk I use, by the way, which is really, really good. It's made from oats. That's a good point, I hadn't actually tried doing that. So. I think probably we should conclude this demonstration. I have been Rob Chapman. This is my new guitar lead. <laughs> this is the x -Vive U2 transmitter. <laughs> and uh, they're really good, really affordable. They work really well. I'm very impressed. And um, yeah, take it easy. Chappers out.